we can start dr ranjana thank you yes we will welcome ms maria right from iran yeah dr maryam can you hear us dr maryam hello yes i can hear you very Hi. good so if we are missing your biography we would like to hear from you you are welcome here for current frontiers from tehran university of medical sciences iran and your topic is effect of dapsone on scopolamin induced memory impairment in mice very good experiment please share with us yes yes you two are giving yes yes i am here with dr nafis anoruzi okay and do you have our presentation the slides can you see uh, we can see your presentation very much okay Looking beautiful so, with the red <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah, please go ahead okay and if you can uh, tell because we do not have your biography so please uh, tell something about yourself so the our listeners can uh, know more about you besides your experiment okay sure hello and good evening everyone thank you for having us my name is dr mayam shayan and i am here with dr nafisa noruzi we are from tehran university of medical sciences currently working at the experimental medicine research center The focus of this center is to conduct translational medicine research in order to transfer the original research findings to clinics. Our presentation is about the effect of dapsone on scopolamine induced memory impairment in mice. Please go ahead. Dementia is a syndrome in which there is deterioration in memory, thinking, behavior, and the ability to perform everyday activities. Worldwide, around 50 million people have dementia. Every four seconds, there is a new case of dementia somewhere in the world. As you can see in the picture, dementia is a global epidemic. and it is predicted that by the year 2050 there will be 135 million people suffering from dementia the problem of caring for people with dementia are not just a social issue but also have important economic consequences according to new reports dementia will be called the most expensive disease of the century and the resulting crisis will become the most important health challenge in the world Dementia is an umbrella term for a set of symptoms including impaired memory and thinking such as alzheimer disease vascular dementia frontotemporal dementia dementia with lewy bodies younger onset alzheimers and huntington as you can see in the pie chart alzheimer's disease alone is responsible for 60 to 70% of the cases of dementia The root of Alzheimer's disease is still unknown and there is no definitive cure for it. Therefore, the present study was designed to assess the neuroprotective activities of dapsone on learning and memory impairment as seen in Alzheimer's disease model using an experimental model to evaluate the memory, the short-term and long-term memory such as Weimar's test and passive avoidance test. Our hypothesis was if dapsone can enhance memory in an animal model with impaired memory induced by scopolamine and in which doses dapsone shows the no mentioned neuroprotective effect. In the previous studies in 1999 Rodriguez worked on an ischemic stroke model and reported that dapsone at a dose of 12.5 and 25 mg per kg can have neuroprotective effects in another case report studies on a 38 year old man with relapsing neurosweet disease zero reported that dapsone can successfully treated the disease 
In 2004, Rios shows that dopsone can have neuroprotective effect on occlusive model of focal ischemia in rats. In 2015, dopsone significantly improved the behavioral disorder and ameliorated brain oxidative stress in aged rats using a surgical stress-related memory impairment. In 2013, in ankinic acid-induced memory impairment, Dobson showed antioxidant and neuroprotective effects against kinic acid-induced neurotoxicity. And also, Yang and his colleagues in 2017 showed that pretreatment with Dobson at a dose of 5 or 10 mg per kg significantly improved the behavioral disorder and response in aged rats after propofol anesthesia. In this study, we used two drugs, Dobson and Scopolamine. Dobson is a sulfon with anti-inflammatory, immunosuppressive, antibacterial, and antibiotic properties, commonly used for the treatment of leprosy. Escopolamine. Escopolamine is an anticholinergic drug used to induce memory impairment. Another name of escopolamine is heosin. It's a medication used to treat motion sickness. The mechanism, the mechanism suggested for escopolamine brain damage are neuroinflammation, oxidative damage, apoptosis, and cholinergic dysfunction. Escopolamine has been shown in many neurobehavioral studies that it can impair memory function in human and rodents, particularly the short-term memory and learning acquisition. Escopolamine is commonly used as a behavioral model in studying cognitive disorders, including Alzheimer's disease. Escopolamine can cause atrophy and degeneration of brain neurons in mice. In this study, we used escopolamine to induce brain, uh, induced memory impairment at a dose of 1 mg per kg. In our study design, we used 150 adult male mice weighing between two to, uh, 20 to 30 grams. All the animals had access to free and clean food and water. The environmental features like temperature and light and darkness were controlled. All the trains and trials were done between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. In our study, to evaluate the memory after Dobson administration, we used two tests, the Vimeis test and the passive avoidance test. As you can see in this picture, uh, this is the box of Vimeis test. The Weimers test is based on the rodents' curiosity to explore novel territories. Rodents normally prefer to investigate a new arm rather than returning to the previously visited arm. As you can see in this picture, mice with an intact memory differentiates the novel arm from the other two arms, and the mice with poor spatial memory doesn't pay attention to the novel arm. From now on, Dr. Norzi will continue to speak. Hello, everyone, and good evening. As um, my name is Nafisa Norzi from Tehran Medical University. As my colleague Marianne just said, we use two tests, two memory tests, Vimeis and passive avoidance. Passive avoidance test is a fear aggravated test which we use to assess the effect of Dobson on long term memory in mice. The passive avoidance chamber is divided into two chambers, one illuminated and one non-illuminated uh, identical chambers. The test is uh, in two phases. Phase one is train and phase two is the trial phase. Uh, in the phase one, the train phase, uh, we put the mice in the illuminated chamber and then we measure the time that mice uh, steps through the non-illuminated chamber. Immediately after the animal enters the dark compartment, the door is shut automatically and a foot shock, uh, 0.5 milliampere for one second is delivered to the animal. 
the animal is then quickly removed from the box and put back into its home cage. Uh, the trial phase is done exactly 24 hours later after the train phase. In trial phase, we uh, then again put the same mice in the illuminated chamber and then we uh, wait and see how much time it takes the mice to step through the non-illuminated chamber. Uh, you can see if the mice uh, is normal and the memory is intact, uh, the mice remembers that uh, yesterday it, uh, we gave it a food shock. So uh, it it, it, the mice doesn't uh, go through the chamber. But if the mice uh, memory is impaired with scopolamine, the mice uh, doesn't remember and then it steps through uh, to the uh, non-illuminated chamber. Uh, here you can see the pictures of our own device here in experimental uh, uh, pharmacology department. Uh, the timeline uh, we used for the Vimes and passive avoidance test is here. The timeline for Vimes test was uh, an hour before the train phase, we gave the mice Dobson. And the t uh, 30 minutes before the train phase in Vimes, we administered the scopolamine. And then an hour after the train phase, we uh, performed the trial phase in Vimes. But in passive avoidance test, uh, an hour before the train phase, again, we gave the mice the opson. And 30 minutes after the train phase, we administered the, uh, before the train phase, we administered the scopolamine. And then 24 hours after the train phase, we uh, performed the trial phase. Uh, you can see the uh, uh, groups we used in this uh, in Vimes. Uh, we had two control groups. One group is the sham group, which uh, we gave it only normal saline. And uh, the second control group was only injected a scopolamine 1 mg per kg. And then for uh, evaluating and finding the uh, most effective dose of Dobson, we gave the mouses, uh, the mice, a different dosage of Dobson. We started with uh, a Dobson 1 mg per kg uh, plus a scopolamine, and then we gave uh, the, uh, the mice different dosage of Dobson to see which one is more effective. And uh, here in the result for Vimes, you can see that uh, Dobson with 5 mg per kg dosage was the most effective one because uh, you can see the duration of uh, the novel arm visit in the mice that we gave uh, 5 mg per kg Dobson was uh, almost similar like, the, uh, like a normal mice, which memory was intact. But in other dosage, uh, for example, this and uh, 0.1 and 0.3 uh, was uh, very um, uh, less than the uh, normal mice. Uh, and here you can see the number of arm visits, which a normal mice uh, had, uh, uh, for example, uh, about uh, six to seven uh, a number of arm, uh, novel arm visit, but uh, mice that was treated with Dobson 5 mg per kg visited the novel arm uh, very uh, much more. Uh, here, uh, we wanted to uh, evaluate the significance of our results. So uh, we uh, took the uh, one-way ANOVA test, and the p-value of uh, our uh, and the p-value for each dosage was, uh, as you can see here, the Dobson 5 mg per kg had the most significance rate. Here you can see the groups for our passive avoidance test. We had again two control groups, a sham group and a group which we only injected a scopolamine 1 mg per kg and two groups of different dosage of Dobson. Here you can see the results for passive avoidance test. Uh, STL means a step through latency which measures in seconds. Uh, the mice that was intact and uh, with no, uh, not impaired memory uh, took a long time to uh, in trial phase to step through the non-illuminated chamber and the mouse uh, that was given 5 uh, mg per kg was treated with Dobson took even longer time 
uh, and in many cases the mouse didn't even go through the chamber. So you can see that our treatment was very successful. In conclusion, uh, the present study demonstrates that Dobson is useful in improving learning and memory deficits induced by scopolamine. The most effective dose of Dobson was 5 mg per kg. Dobson uh, is also shows to be a good candidate as a neuroprotective drug in memory impairment diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease. And we suggest that if these findings are confirmed in humans, Dobson could become a useful treatment for memory impairments, diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. However, more studies should be conducted to support this hypothesis. Uh, and thank you for uh, taking time and listening to our presentation. Thank you for having us. If anyone has any question, we are... Thank you, doctor. Any questions from anybody? Can we move forward, Mr. Krishna?